Hi, this is Neil. Well, the end of an era, on August the 7th, Huntsman announced the sale of their surfactant business, or should I say their remaining surfactant business, for $2.1 billion to Indorama of Thailand. And that includes, in fact, their surfactants and their intermediates. Um, the purchase includes assets in Texas, in uh, India and Australia. And so I guess this is uh, truly the end of an era. Um, products include linear alkyl benzene, ethylene oxide, ethoxylates, ethanolamines, um, mainly. Um, it's a strategic purchase for Indorama, obviously. Uh, a number of years ago, they bought the EO and uh, MEG business from Old World, located in Pasadena, Texas, and currently, as you know, supply ethylene oxide for ethoxylation purposes to Clariant and um, Oxteno, among others. So the purchase itself is, um, or should I say the sale itself, the sale by Huntsman, to me, is not a surprise. Huntsman, the company, has always been a bit of a deal maker, and um, uh, this, uh, I think, makes a lot of sense. Uh, following the disposal of their European surfactant business in a series of transactions starting in 2014. And so the sale of the remainder of the surfactant business to me was not a surprise. What was a little bit of a surprise was the purchaser. I would have bet uh, myself either Wilmar or KLK, Musi Mas, one of these folks from Southeast Asia, would have been the purchaser of the business. I would have handicapped Wilmar as the favorite, quite honestly, given their history in doing deals with Huntsman in Europe. However, a um, yes, an Asian competitor, an Asian company did buy the business. It turned out to be Indorama, which, as I said, in view of their existing EO presence in the Gulf Coast, I guess in retrospect, uh, makes a lot of sense. I wish I could have said I predicted this. I didn't, um, but there you go. Um, uh, as I said, Huntsman is no stranger to deals. Um, they did a series of deals in Europe starting in 2014 when they sold their commodity surfactant business to Wilmar. That included a, uh, an ethoxylation plan in Lavera in France and then uh, long-term deals which Wilmar struck to source sulfates and sulfonates from the um, Huntsman plants uh, Castiglioni in Italy, of course, and San Miguel in France. And so uh, that, that got Huntsman out of commodity surfactants, uh, not exactly out of the assets until a couple of years later in 2016, when InnoSpec, um, a familiar name to US listeners perhaps, um, acquired the, uh, the, those plants from Huntsman. And uh, along with that, uh, took on a long-term supply arrangement for the commodity surfactants to, um, to Wilmar. Then uh, later on in uh, 2019, finally I should say in 2019, in January of 2019, INEOS bought the Lavera plant, because uh, Wilmar had ended up buying the, the plant as well as the business from Huntsman, the Lavera ethoxylation plant in France uh, from Wilmar, and along with that came a long-term supply uh, agreement to Wilmar. But INEOS now, strategic owner, I think it makes a lot more sense of that ethoxylation plant um, that, um, uh, originally started off with Huntsman, actually prior to that started off with Albright and Wilson. I'm not going to go into ancient history here on this blog. We'll maybe have another another blog on, on ancient surfactant history. So um, no stranger to deal making, I guess, is the point here for Huntsman. And in fact, who could forget um, not that long ago when Clariant and Huntsman agreed to merge in a uh, $14 billion transaction. Uh, a transaction which to me did not make a whole lot of sense given the radically different product mixes uh, between Clarion and Huntsman. And apparently it didn't make a lot of sense either to some of the uh, major shareholders of Huntsman, including so-called activist investor White Tail, who was um, not particularly pleased with the deal and managed to discover that. Uh, and, and shortly afterwards, Clarion uh, fell into the arms, if you like, of Sabic. Uh, who ended up acquiring almost 25% uh, of that company. And, um, and again, prior to all of this occurring, some of you may remember back in um, 2007, John Huntsman agreed to sell the entire Huntsman company, if you remember this, um, in an auction process, the two finalists of which were Bazell and the private equity firm Apollo. Apollo won the, uh, the auction, uh, with a price of $6.5 billion for the entire Huntsman company. And then in 2008, 
as we approached the um, the financial uh, recession of late 2008, they invoked a MAC clause, Material Adverse Conditions Clause, which basically said, yeah, it looked good when we uh, made the agreement to do the acquisition, but now that it comes time to close, a lot of things have changed and the business is not as good as it once was, and therefore we don't want to do it. And they pulled out. Uh, Huntsman promptly sued, and late in 2008, they settled for a uh, a little over $1 billion for that. And so since then, Huntsman has hung on to the company, although um, is not averse to selling off bits and pieces in deals as we have just seen. So um, that's, I guess, all I have to say about that, except that I, I don't know if I told you guys, I met John Huntsman back in 2005. He was, um, he was at the opening of a building at the University of Pennsylvania. He just donated $40 million to um, to build that building, and of course it was named after him, Huntsman Hall, and um, and, and he was standing uh, just chatting with people and signing uh, books, a copy of the book, which I got, uh, here it is, Winners Never Cheat, and if you can read that or if it comes out backwards on the screen, I'm not sure, but anyway, that's the book he was, um, he was signing as well as chatting to folks, and so I uh, got in line, went up and shook his hand and said, hi, I'm Neil Burns from Pilot Chemical, as I was at the time, and immediately said, Pilot, great, love you guys, you're great customers for a linear alkyl benzene, which I thought was pretty good for, um, for a man at the, the top of the company there, uh, and um, for whom we were, uh, I think, a fairly small customer, has to be said. But anyway, he, he chatted a bit and, and was signing the book and he gave it to me and I took the book home and it was only several days later I got to open it and he writes in here, thank you, Neil, thank you for being a fine customer. We are grateful to you. We're fellow alums from a great school. This book talks about it. That was pretty cool. Um, so yeah. I liked John and um, think a lot of his company, so I wish them the best and I wish the new owners of the uh, surfactant business Indorama the very best and welcome to uh, welcome to the surfactant business to them. All right, some other deals. This has got me thinking of deals which have um, made the news in addition to the Huntsman deal in August. So um, earlier this month, we read that WordPress, those are the folks behind a lot of, uh, a lot of websites, um, a number of which I run included, and uh, WordPress bought Tumblr for $3 million. A lot of you guys are saying, what? Tumblr, what are they? They were the darlings of the internet industry for a short while, and in fact, in 2013, Yahoo, another company you may be, may be saying, who, um, uh, also former darlings of internet industry, but no, no, nonetheless, well, Yahoo under Marissa uh, Mayer bought Tumblr for $1.1 billion in 2013, uh, with the famous line being uttered, we promise not to screw it up. Promise broken, a mere six scant years later, uh, the property was sold for next to nothing, $3 million. So um, I found that to be pretty interesting. Um, the other thing, the other deal, I guess, that uh, has not exactly happened yet, but was announced in August was that WeWork filed for an IPO, an initial public offering of shares. And you know, their business model is they, they, um, they rent office space they lease office space from building owners uh, long term, and then they rent out that office space after subdividing it and sprucing it up short term as a sort of short term working, co-working, shared office space type area, as, as many other companies do, Regus included. And um, what, what I thought was pretty interesting was their S1, their, their actual registration document. If you read that, um, you'll find it quite fascinating. Um, the first line, the first line in, in that document, the business summary says, uh, in part, our mission is to, <laughs> sorry, I, I, don't, I don't mean to laugh. The, the, the first line says, in part, our, our mission is to elevate the world's consciousness. So apparently that is the mission statement of this business, which rents office space long term and, and then re-rents it uh, short term. Their mission is to elevate the world's consciousness, which, which I, I mean, I, I, gosh, I, I have an incredible admiration for a company, any company that can state that, let alone a company that rents office space. Um, and it makes me recall the time when uh, not so long ago, 
Um, at P2, we went through our um, a process of figuring out what our mission statement should be and, and came up with something which I thought was, was pretty darn good, um, speaking to the elegant processes and sustainable products that we make. Um, but maybe, maybe we weren't thinking big enough um, and certainly weren't thinking along the lines of elevating the world's consciousness. Our own consciousness uh, is enough work, but the world, that, that's a big one. Um, some of their uh, nuggets from the IPO document from the S1, uh, pre-tax loss of $1.9 billion in 2018 on revenues of $1.8 billion. Interesting. Uh, some of the buildings, some of the buildings in which they rent space are actually owned by the founder, uh, Adam Newman. Um, and so they're renting space from the founder and uh, not, not, a, not overall, but in part, and, and then re-renting that. And uh, finally, um, currently the, uh, as a result of various rounds of um, venture capital fundraising, the company is valued at $47 billion. So um, a lot of interesting stuff in that S1. Is we work the next Tumblr? I have no idea. I have no idea. Um, there's some interesting things going on in the market, and then the deal business, uh, uh, Uber, Lyft, etc. And this is um, another example of um, either genius or uh, lunacy, uh, or retrospectively, the next bubble. We'll see. I, I don't know. I, I just know that uh, what Huntsman does is uh, build plants, run them, sell stuff that makes other stuff that adds a lot of value to our daily lives. Health, hygiene, uh, for example, to say the least in the, in the, um, in the, in the surfactant area and, and, and construction chemicals and so forth that, uh, that really make the, the economy and, and uh, modern civilization work. That is not bad to me and um, I, I guess I'll stick with that. So that's it for uh, this week. I'll talk to you guys next week. Thank you.